Hey guys, this is Tia Rockwell and I am the founder of Sisters with Purpose Women's Ministry. And so I wanna go ahead and jump into this quick video that the Lord just wants me to share. Um, I have been off of social media for some time now and a lot of that has just been instructions of the Lord. Um, and so he has just really been uh, speaking to me and just kind of sharing some things with me. But right before I got off of social media, if you have been following me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, um, you might have saw that uh, I posted some prophetic words that the Lord had given me um, some time ago. Well, it's, it's still recent. Um, and so a lot of that, uh, what I shared has been really centered around consecration. Um, it has been centered around salvation, sanctification, um, and just really trying to uh, get many people in the body of Christ, believers, to really wake up and to see what the Lord is doing in this hour. Um, the Lord is really, y'all, trying to get as many of his people saved in the world, the lost, um, the unbeliever. Um, and he's also trying to wake up the body of Christ. He's, it's like a shaking um, that he's doing in this hour because Jesus is coming back, right? He is coming back. And so the Lord is really trying to wake people up and trying to get as many people um, saved. And so um, those who are in ministry, you know, the church, something that the Lord was showing me is, you know, um, we should really be training up the sheep. We should really be training the church up to go out and to truly share the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, to evangelize, to really know how to share the gospel. Um, you know, when it comes to sanctification and salvation and, and really going out there and working like whatever space that you are operating in, that you are taking up, you know, you should use it as an opportunity, honestly, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? And so there are just so many moving parts that is happening in the spirit realm, that's happening in the body that the Lord is doing. And on one part, it's very exciting. Um, you know, I'm very thankful for what the Lord is doing. But on the other end, we are truly going to see God's hand begin to move um, on the church specifically, right? And a lot of that is going to look like, you know, how the Bible tells us that he's going to be raising up many people, right? Um, and while that is happening, we're going to begin to see some fall. And so that's not to say that we want to, that we are speaking these things on people, but that's just the facts. That's just reality. That's just what the Lord is going to be doing because, you know, God is trying to get his church together, right? Um, and he is going to be separating the wheat from the tares is what the scriptures say. And so what that means is, is basically like God really, he's going to, he wants to know truly who are standing with him, who are, who are actually, um, who are believers of Jesus, you know, who are the call, the chosen, you know, ones, um, who are true sheep, right? Who are true shepherds that are leading their sheep, not astray, but who are really leading their sheep, you know, to Jesus. And so we're going to just be seeing a lot of things going to be happening um, coming in 2024. And so if you've been following me for a while, um, some of the prophetic messages that I've been sharing from the Lord has been centered around consecration, salvation, sanctification, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, evangelism, you know, evangelizing to the people. Um, and it's just a lot. And so anyway, I want to go ahead and jump into this short message um, because I don't want, I'm not going to do, you know, too much of teaching in this message, but I really do want to share what the Lord has also been adding to the messages that I have already been sharing from him. Right. Um, so one of the, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the messages that I shared a while back was God was calling for many of his children to consecrate. So when it comes to consecration, consecration is uh, it's really sanctification, right? It means to, it means to be uh, sanctified. Um, consecration also means to be prepared, right? Consecration means to be set apart, to be dedicated, um, to be holy. You know, when it comes to consecration, uh, it should be the way that we should live as believers of Jesus Christ. It's who we are. We're consecrated. We are set apart um, from the world, right? Consecration is to be holy, to be sanctified. Um, it's, it's to be dedicated, prepared, right? And so, um, 
when people look at us as believers of Jesus Christ, they should know that who we are, how I live, that I am I am a chosen one. I am a child of God. And so um, I actually did a in-depth study on consecration uh, via YouTube live. I would love for you guys to go and check that out because it really goes in depth because we came from the Old Testament um, and I'm going to do a part two to to uh, do a teaching on how does consecration look in the New Testament, right? Um, and so, but in, in, in the Old Testament, consecration for the children of Israel, it looked a lot like them before they had an encounter with the Lord, right? Before God came and to do a thing um, and to for them to have an encounter with him. Uh, it shows a lot of scriptures in the Old Testament how the, the children of Israel, they would prepare themselves or, or in other words, consecrate themselves before they had an encounter with God. So anytime, you know, the Old Testament talks about the Ark of the Covenant, right? And you guys can go and look, look that up. But it talks about like before God was about to move on their behalf and do something, they were called to consecrate themselves first right they had to cleanse themselves they had to uh prepare and to make sure that they were holy to make sure that they were purified um and that is how they were able to encounter the lord that is how they were able to stay in alignment or um, in other words in covenant with god because they were consecrated Okay. And so there are so many scriptures that talks about consecration. And so when the Lord began to really talk to me about consecration, um, he was telling me like, I, you know, for me, uh, specifically, he was saying that he needed for me to begin to consecrate. Um, and I was like, okay, Lord, you know, how does that look? Is this similar to fasting? You know, and it's similar. It is similar to fasting, but it is trying to get us to understand that who we are as believers of Jesus, that our life should always be consecrated. We should always always be ready and prepared for God to move or to do a thing, right? And so many times in the Old Testament, we see where there were some instances where God could not do a thing in the, in the children of Israel because they were not consecrated. In other words, they were not set apart. They were not sanctified. And we know throughout the Old Testament, we see where the children of Israel, they constantly disobey God, right? They were believing in false worship, uh, false gods and idolizing. And um, they were, you know, being just disobedient with God. And they were uh, just not doing what God had called for them to do. So in other words, when they disobey God, when they turn to false uh, gods and idols and worship and things like that, what happened is it moved them out of covenant with the Lord, okay? And so when the Lord began to talk to me about consecration, what God was showing me is that that is just like the body of Christ today, right? You know, where the church in, in some, in a lot of ways actually has turned to idolizing idols and false gods and they have, you know, in some way stepped out of alignment with God, you know, a lot of churches. And so God was saying, I'm looking for a consecrated people. I'm looking for my children to be consecrated. In other words, holy. In other words, set apart, prepared for me to move and for them to have an encounter uh, with me. Okay. And so um, I would love for you guys to go and do a study on consecration just so that you can see how that looks. Um, consecration is you know, you are holy. You are a living sacrifice to the Lord. In other words, you are submitted to God. Your life is fully surrendered uh, to him as a believer of Jesus Christ. That means that whatever the, whatever the Lord wants to do in our life, we have given him full reign dominion over our life because we live a consecrated life. We are sanctified, right? And so... Um, apart from consecration, something else that the Lord was showing me um, that I shared on social media actually before I got off was he began to speak to me about sanctification, about salvation. And he was saying that, you know, Tia, he was like, a lot of people don't fear the Lord. They don't fear him, you know, and he gave me the scripture Philippians. I want to say it's one and uh, 12, I believe, or two and tw chapter two and 12. I had to put it up here, but that scripture, it just says to work out our salvation with fear 
and with trembling, okay, our salvation. And so the, uh, the Lord would just show me that there are a lot of people that say that they are Christians, that they believe in Jesus, but they are not working out their salvation with fear and trembling. And what that means is it's not to, it, it does not mean to be scared of God. It does not mean to be like, you know, oh, I can't do anything. But when it comes to that word fear, that means that there is a reverence, that there's an honor that we have of, of God, that because I fear God because I have I have respect for him I honor him I, there is reverence you know for God what that mean is that when it comes to my salvation when it comes to my life and the way that I live that means that anything that is displeasing to the Lord I need to separate from it anything that can mess up my my walk with him you know my relationship with him I don't want any parts of it right that means that anything that goes against God God, that I should have fear of it, you know, false worship, idolizing, adultery, um, anything, you know, false gods, all of these things that sometimes we become a part of that we fail to realize is not of God, that just because it looks good, it sounds good, it's, it, everybody is doing it, your, your pastors are doing it, your favorite church and, and, leaders, and leaders are doing it, then you think that it's okay. But in other words, it's not okay to the Lord right and so god is saying people are not working out their salvation with fear and trembling okay and so as we as we get ready to go into um the new year something i just want to briefly talk about that the lord wanted me to share was to add on to this consecration right because once again consecration the lord is looking for a sanctified people he's looking for a pure and holy people you know we have um this thing in a, in uh, for believers when they say you know you hear things like well you know uh you don't have to be that holy or um you know people think you know you think you so holy but here's the thing god has called for us to be holy and i know sometimes when we use that word uh we're we're, we're kind of referencing um you know um these, you know, self-righteousness or, you know, self-centeredness or self being self, con you know, uh, conceited or things like that. But apart from that, God has called for his sheep, for his children to be holy. You know, he's called for us to be set apart. And I think what we're seeing in the body of Christ, the body of Christ, many people has become very comfortable with, you know, trying to have a relationship with God and go to church and things like that. But they don't want to seem like they are holy. They don't want to seem like they are that deep, you know, in their walk with Christ. And honestly, it's because there's a fear, I think, sometimes that they have with making other people feel uncomfortable. But here's the thing. God is saying, I need to know what whose side are you on? There's no being in the middle. There's no lukewarm. And I think so many times we have this mentality or this mindset that, you know, we want to walk with God, but we don't want to make others uncomfortable. We don't want others to feel like, oh, was she just being too deep? Was she too holy? Or she too, or she too this and too that? But let me tell you something, y'all. Like we're, we're going into a time now where you want to make sure that you are on the right side of God. That, that when people look at your life and people look at you, they should know whose side that you are on. They should know that you are a believer of Christ, that your life is surrendered to the Lord, that whatever the Lord tells you to speak and do and go, wherever he tells you to go, that you say yes to him. Um, and don't have this fear of, try, of making other people uncomfortable, right? Um, God is not looking for people who are settling you know there are so many people who are compromising uh be out of fear of people right um and so anyway that brings me to my next point when the lord began to talk to me about uh consecration and i began to do a deep study into consecration from the old testament to the new testament one of the things that god the holy spirit began to also talk to me about was i heard him say he said tia consecration and covenant go hand in hand my lord i even feel the holy spirit now he says that consecration and covenant go hand in hand what does that mean right let me just give you just a simple definition definition of covenant covenant is simply an agreement right covenant is like a contract um, between us as believers, as children of God and God, right? So all throughout the Old Testament, we see where God always established a new covenant with the children of Israel. It was basically, basically saying, if you do this, right, 
um, then I'm going to do this, right? It's saying that, you know, in this contract, in this agreement, you have everything that is that is expected of you as, you know, a children of God, right? And God says that if you show up and you do your part in this contract, in this covenant, right? Then I'm going to show up and do my part as God, you know, uh, we see there are so many blessings and so many generational blessings and promises, you know, that God gives to his children in the, in the Old Testament. And he tells them, like, if you do this, I will be your Lord. I will be your God. Right. Uh, but we also see where because the children of Israel, they messed up so many times. Ultimately, what they were doing was they were uh, coming out of covenant with God and, and they found themselves in false worship and other guys and, you know, all these things or whatever. And so the, so the Lord was saying, Tia, you know, consecration and covenant goes hand in hand with each other. And I'm going to back that up with scripture here in a second. Um, one of the things that many people, you know, the body of Christ really lack is like spiritual revelation, spiritual wisdom about certain things, especially when it comes to covenant. You know, um, I think this year or, or the last two years, we've seen where so many people have come into understanding and knowledge about covenant and how God really he he honors covenant and he takes covenant with his children very seriously and we can see this as an example um throughout marriage right we know that when we go into a marriage with our spouse that is a covenant that we are coming into agreement with our spouse but also uh before the lord right that is a a marriage is a is is, is an established uh covenant that god makes between us and him and our spouse our marriage right and so throughout the bible god uses marriage to show us um you know what covenant looks like with him and so, you know, when it comes to adultery and things like that, when you cheat on your spouse, you are breaking covenant with your spouse, but also with the Lord, because God is against adultery. But another thing that um, that I want to add to that when it comes to adultery or breaking covenant with God or cheating on God, right, is false worship, false gods, you know, idols and things like that. And that's something that the Lord is about to be begin to come for um, in this next year. He's been coming for, for it already, but God is about to begin to come and you're going to begin to see so many things fall, but it's because of the false worship, the idols that people have connected themselves to in the church, these leaders, right? But also people personally. And that's why you see so many of us and, and, and thank God, hallelujah, by God's glory, so many people are waking up to these Greek organizations and these secret societies and Mason and Eastern Star and all these things because what they don't understand when they enter, when we entered into those organization, there was a legal right. There was a covenant that we enter into that, that now separated us from the true and living God. Right. And I know a lot of people don't like to think like that. They don't believe that. They don't think that it's true. But I'm here to tell you, right, as a person who denounced, you know, a few years ago now and the knowledge that the Lord brought me into it's the truth, okay? It's just, it is what it is. Whether you want to accept it or not, it is what it is. And so I don't care if your church have Greek day. I don't care if your pastors, he's in a Greek organization or she's in a Greek organization and life look like it's going well and you think that it's okay. Let me tell you something, y'all. When it comes to these covenants, God is not playing with these covenants. And here's the thing, God honors covenant. So whether you are in a covenant with a false God, or whether or whether enemy satan the devil has legal ground to you if you have entered into a covenant whether it's of god or it's not of god god honors that point blank period right because he is a covenant keeping god and we see this throughout scriptures um in the bible okay so um when it comes to covenant god was saying that tia as we go into a new year I am going to be honoring covenants. It is so important for you to know if you are in right standing with the Lord, if you are in covenant with God, right? It is so important because God is going to begin to honor that. Um, let me give you guys an example. Back in, I want to say September or October, um, the Lord had called for me uh, in my ministry to go on a five-day fast. And I remember the Lord said that when you go on this five-day fast, he says that um, I'm establishing a new covenant with you. 
and so he gave us very specific prayers that he wanted us to pray um and one of those and one of those uh promises within the covenant that he uh established with us was he said that i am about to extend my grace uh to you for old and new things right he was saying that your grace is going to be extended that whatever i started in you i'm about to carry it out to the day of completion it's philippians 1 and 6. um he said that even things that i called you to do long ago and you did not do it for whatever reason which is disobedience you know um he says but i'm about to extend my grace to you in that area but also into the new things that i'm about to call you into because god is doing a new thing right but he's also giving grace to many of us for old things that we did not go back and do and so he said go on this five day fast he had us to do very specific prayer uh, prayer points he has to get he had us getting up at a certain time to pray um and he even had us to at the end of our fast he had us to rededicate our life back to jesus christ he did not want for these ladies in my ministry to leave from that covenant or from that that fast and not know if they were truly saved right so you know what he was like if you don't know that you're saved you're going to be you're going to know by the time this fast ended so we rededicated our life back to christ we repented of things we uh, we confess with our mouths, you know, that we believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, that he died on the cross, he rose again, and all that good stuff. And when God establishes a covenant with you, he is going to fulfill that. His promises are going to come to pass, right? It's him saying that if you do this, if I'm telling you to do this and you, and you are obedient to that, I am going to show up and do my part, right? Because God is not, he is not a man that he shall lie, right? He is not a man where his, where, where his, where his words fall dead to the ground. He has to fulfill what he has said. Um, and so at the end of that fast, I would never forget, uh, we finished, we started on a Monday, we finished on a Friday, and literally, y'all, God showed me um, that the covenant had been established with for us, right, with him. The next day, I got up, and as I was driving, there were rainbows everywhere that I was driving that day, I mean, and literally sitting on top of my head, and so I looked up, and God says, this was me uh, fulfilling my promise to you. This is me with your new covenant, you know, that you have entered into with me, right? And so this is also backed up in scripture because when we see um, in the Old Testament, in Genesis, for example, that the rainbow is a promise from God. The rainbow is a covenant. My God, the, the rainbow is God's covenant that he has established with us as his children, right? But see, here's the thing that we have seen throughout history and even now in the body of Christ is that many people don't know that they have walked out of that covenant with God, my Lord. And so that is why, you know, as a mouthpiece for the Lord, um, I talk a lot about these covenants when it comes to these Greek organizations because as you guys know I have shared my testimony about this but here's the thing guys like you know we're just trying to get people to wake up you know when it comes to these things because God is a covenant keeping God okay and he takes these things very seriously and so anyway he was saying Tia consecration and covenant go hand in hand um, and so I'm going to um, read us two different um passages in the bible to back up what it is that i'm saying that the lord brought me to so we're going to read chapter 7 of joshua and we're going to start at verse 2 okay and always go back and read for yourselves starting at verse 2 it says joshua sent men from jericho to ai which is near beth haven east of beth uh, bethel and told them go up and scout the land so the men went up and scouted ai after returning, Joshua, uh, they were after they returned to Joshua, they reported to him, Don't send all the people, but send about a thousand, about two thousand or three thousand men to attack AI. Since the people of AI are so few, don't wear out all our people there. <clears throat> Verse four. So about three thousand men went up there, but they fled from the men of AI. The men of Ai struck down about 36 of them and chased them from outside the city gates to quarries. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. The men of Ai struck down about 36 of them and chased them from outside the city gate 
to the quarries, striking them down on the, dis on the descent. As a result, the people lost heart, okay? Verse 6, it says, Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord until evening, as did elders of Israel. They all put dust on their heads, uh, dust on their heads. O oh Lord God, Joshua said, why did, why did you ever bring these people across the Jordan to hand us over to the Amorites for our destruction? If only we had content to remain on the other side of the of the Jordan. What can I say, Lord, now that Israel has turned its back and run from its enemies? When the Canaanites and all who live in the land hear about this, they will surround us and wipe out our name from the earth. Then what will you do about your great name? I want you guys to listen to this, okay? Because now this is the Lord speaking. Verse 10. Then the Lord said to Joshua, stand up. Why have you fallen face down? Israel have sinned or has sinned. They have violated my covenant that I appointed for them. They have taken somewhat of what, of what was set apart. They have stolen, deceived, and put those things with their own belongings. This is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They will turn their backs and run from their enemies because they have been set apart for destruction. He says, I will no longer be with you unless you remove from among you what is set apart, my Lord. Verse 13, listen to this. Go and consecrate the people. Tell them to consecrate themselves tomorrow for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. There are things that are set apart among you, Israel. You will not be able to stand against your enemies until you remove what is set apart. My Lord, today, let me go down to verse 15. It says, the one who is caught with the things set apart must be burned along with everything he has because he has violated the Lord's covenant and committed an outrage in Israel. My God, y'all, like this is something serious, okay? And so what we see in this passage of Joshua chapter seven, we see where the children of Israel were, were about to go to battle or they went to battle um, to, um, to fight against a group called AI, right? And the Lord had already told them, you know, if you set yourselves apart, if you consecrate yourselves, you are going to defeat AI. But what happened is that everything that the Lord told the children of Israel to do in order to be set apart, in other words, to be consecrated, the children of Israel went against God. They went against the things that they were supposed to do, right? You have to understand that God is a God of order. He is a God of standard. He is a, he is a God of, of, you know, there are, there are, you know, principles, right? Statutes, commandments that the Lord give us. Okay. And so he told, you know, the children of Israel to set themselves apart from the things that could destroy them. But what did they do? They went and they began to take things they stole these things these belongings everything that they were supposed to be set apart they took them right and see here's the thing with many people in the body of christ in the church that we see we try to do a little bit of both right we try to have god we try to have the world right you know i try to have you know be in my greek letter organization and serve in my greek letter organization but you're not really serving fully in the body of christ you believe in god and you are a part of you know you go to church every day but your heart your heart is truly with your organization says the lord ah oh, my lord and so when we see here in this passage, the, it says that Joshua, he, in other words, he began to grieve because uh, they got defeated. You know, the children of Israel, they lost the battle, you know, and it's almost like he began to grieve. And now he begins to question God, like, God, why have you, you know, turned against us? Why have all these things, you know, happened? But the Lord is like, no, 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 no. He says, stand up. Why have you fallen face down? He says, Israel have sinned against me. He says, they have violated my covenant that I appointed to them. They, they disobeyed everything that I told them to do and they did whatever they wanted to do. That is why they lost the battle. 
right? That is what the that's what the Lord is saying in this outer hour that many people are about to begin to lose and, and God's gonna begin to turn against them because you have not set yourself apart, says the Lord. You have not worked out your salvation with fear and trembling. You try to have a little bit of God and the world. You try to say, well, oh, I go to church every Sunday and I serve that church and I do these things. But God said, I never knew you depart from me. Because your heart is not truly with the Lord. You are, you are not fully surrendered with the, with the Lord. You are not uh, for, fully surrendered to the Lord. You are not sanctified. You are not consecrated. You are not set apart, right? That when people look at you, when they look at your life, they should say that this is truly a child of God because she is set apart. He is set apart, right? And so they lost the battle because they did not set themselves apart. And when, it, when this consecration come in, when this covenant come in, what happened is they broke the covenant with God, right? Are you breaking covenant with God? What are you a part of? What are you attached to? And when we break covenant with, with the Lord, when we have allowed for doors to be opened in our life, when portals have been opened to our life, where we have given, given uh, the enemy a door to come into our life, right? Many many people think, oh, you know, they these zodiac signs and horoscopes and, you know, uh, sage and crystals, and I can do all these, but I'm a believer of Jesus Christ. That's a door that has been opened to you. And so the enemy is now able to come in and have rule reign dominion in your life because you have broken covenant with God right and so this is what the children of Israel did they broke covenant with God therefore they were not able to defeat their enemy so you begin to think like why is all hell breaking loose and why are all these things breaking loose in my life but you have to ask yourself what have I committed myself to what rituals and oaths have I committed my lifestyle my life to my family to my bloodline to my generation to uh, hence, Greek Greek organizations and secret societies, right? There's rituals and oaths that you have committed yourself to when you became a member of these organizations. And so now doors, spiritual doors have been opened, right? The enemy have legal rights to you and your bloodline. I know we don't like to talk about these things. And, the, and that's the problem because the church, pastors, leaders have failed to teach this, this, this kind of thing, right? And so... We see here where they broke covenant with God. They, they did not consecrate themselves truly. They thought that, oh, well, we can be consecrated, but I can still, you know, uh, begin to do certain things. I can still be a part of certain things. I don't have to set myself all the way from the Lord, right? And so the God, God said they stole things that he had told them to set, set themselves apart. And so this is why when we're going into this new year, the Lord is saying, are you truly a child of God? Are you in covenant with me, right? Are you in covenant with me? Because what is about to begin to happen in this new year as Jesus is making his way back and things are going to begin to unfold in the world, right? There are going to be a lot of things that, that God is saying. You know, some of us, we've, we have been able to get by with a lot of things, right? You know, being lukewarm and, you know, we have been able to have a little bit of God and still have some world and things like that. And, you know, and, and things have been working out for us, right? We, we, you know, God has not taken away his blessings. God has not taken away, you know, what he, his promises. And he's not like that, right? Because he is a covenant keeping God. But the Lord is saying that as we begin to go into this new year, y'all, and what's to come, the same, the old things that you were doing and how you were able to get, you know, get by, you are not going to be able to still use that, use that to get by into this, into what we're going into in the body of Christ, into the kingdom. God is saying all these old things and what you were doing before, you cannot use the same uh, play going into the new year, right? Because God is saying that a lot of things that you are able to overcome, you know, you cannot use that same tool coming into the new year. You know what I'm saying? You can't use that same thing. That's not what's going to begin to defeat the enemy. Okay. And so God was saying that the reason why they were not able to defeat AI is because a door had been opened. And anytime we allow for a door to be open, y'all, like, the enemy can come in and attack anywhere. He can attack through your mind, your health, your children, your children, children, your generations, your finances. All of these things can, can come under attack because a door has been opened by way of you. Okay? That is what the Lord is saying. He is saying that the way that we're going to be able to defeat 
many things that's, that's coming ahead is by way of covenant. Oh my gosh. Am I in covenant with the Lord? Am I consecrated? Am I fasting? Am I surrendered to the Lord? Am I turning down my plate? Am I, am I not being uh, distracted by social media and all this content? Am I reading the Bible for myself? Do I know the word for myself? Is God word truly in my heart? That is what the Lord is saying. Are we using, is the Bible the foundation of your life? Okay? Because the government, all these things are going to begin to happen and unfold. You need the foundation of Jesus Christ truly in your heart. You need to be truly in covenant and right standing in alignment with the Lord. Okay? There are many things that you have been able to defeat. But what the Lord is saying that there are some things that the only way you're going to be, you are going to be able to defeat certain things in these battles that's, that's coming ahead is by way of covenant. My God is by way of covenant. And so therefore many people need to break covenant and come out of covenants that is not God covenant. Okay. That is what the Lord is saying coming into this new year. You have to be a consecrated people. In other words, you have to be sanctified. You have to be holy. You have to be set apart. You have to be prepared. You have to be dedicated, truly dedicated to the Lord. Okay, to God, to Jesus Christ. My God, I feel this thing. All right, so let me end this video. I don't want to go too in depth, but I'm going to show you one more passage to back up what it is that I'm saying. And I thought it was so good when Holy Spirit gave me this revelation. So we're going to go over to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. And this is a story. I'm not going to read all of it, but this is the story about David and Goliath. My God. David and Goliath. When I was reading this, I thought it was so good. So many of us know about David and Goliath. We know that, you know, David was a little boy. Um, you know, very anointed, you know, he was a king, he was very anointed, and we know that he defeated Goliath. We know that Goliath was this giant, you know, that David went up against. And so many times we look at that story and I think that we're like, oh, you know, David, he was able to, you know, take, the, you know, Goliath out with stones. He threw the stones and he defeated and things like that. But Holy Spirit gave me some deep revelation into this. And I thought it was so good. Um, and so anyway, we're going to read it. We're going to start actually chapter 17. We are going to go over to, we're going to start. Let's see. Okay. We're going to start actually in verse 25. Okay. And we're going to kind of bounce around. Um, it says, previously an Israelite man had declared, do you see this man who keeps coming out? He comes to defy Israel. The king will make the man who kills him very rich and will give him his daughter. The king will also make the family of that man's father exempt from paying taxes in Israel. Verse 26, David spoke to the men who were standing with him. What would be done for the man who kills that Philistine and <clears throat> removes his, this disgrace from Israel? Just who is this, um, listen, just who is this uncircumcised Philistine? that he should defy the armies of the living God. I'm going to bounce around over to verse 43. It says, uh, he said, this is Goliath, right? Because now we see where David has gone to the Philistine. Okay. And it says, uh, the Philistine, it says, he said to David, <coughs> am I a dog that you come against me with sticks? Then he cursed David by his gods, lowercase g. Okay. So this is David, or this is the Philistine, in other words, Goliath, that is now he's kind of making fun of fun of David. Like, who are you that think you're about to come and try to defeat me, right? And it says that the Philistine, he cursed David with his gods, not the true living God, but with his gods, okay? But remind you over in verse 26, it says that the Philistine is uncircumcised. It, it, that means that he is not with God. He is not in covenant with the true and living God, okay? And so verse 44, it says, come here, the Philistine calls to David, and I'll, I'll give you or I'll give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts. I want y'all to listen to listen to David because this is where it gets so good. Verse 45, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with a sword, spear, and, 
and a uh, javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of armies, the God of the ranks of Israel. You have defiled him. Okay. Verse uh, 46, it says, today the Lord will hand you over to me. My God, that's confidence. Ah, he says to me, that's assurance. That's a, that's a knowing. That's a promise. That's I know for a fact that I'm about to defeat you. Okay. That's what David is saying. In other words. He says, today I'll strike you down, remove your head, and give the corpses of the Philistine camp to the birds of the sky and the wild creatures of the earth. Then all the world will know that Israel has a God, capital G, the true and living God. Verse uh, 47. And this whole assembly will know that it is not by the sword or by the spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's. He will hand you over to us. Verse 48. When the Philistines started to started forward to attack David, David ran quickly to the battle uh, line to meet the Philistine. My Lord. Verse 49. David puts his hand in the bag, took out stone, slung it, and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down to the ground. Verse 50. David defeated the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Let, and listen to here, because a lot of people think that David killed Goliath or the Philistine with the stone. But let's let, listen to the script. This is why you got to read the scripture for yourself. David defeated the Philistine with a, he, you know, defeated the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Yes, he took him down. David overpowered the Philistine and killed him without having a sword. David ran and stood over him. He grabbed the Philistine's uh, sword, pulled it from his sheath and used it to kill him. Then he cut off his head. I'm going to stop right there. Oh, this is a mighty word. Oh my God. My Lord today. So when we're looking at this passage, many people think like, oh, this little boy, like he killed this big giant with the stone and with the sword and everything y'all. But let me tell you something that was just a physical event, you know, manifestation of what the Lord had promised. But let me tell you something that it wasn't the sword. It wasn't the stone that took down this giant. Y'all, it was covenant. It was covenant. It was covenant, y'all, that allowed for David to defeat the Philistine. It was covenant. It was covenant, and the physical manifestation was the, stone, the, the stones and the sword. So what Holy Spirit was saying to me, because you have to remember that the Philistine was not a child of God. The scripture says that the Philistine was uncircumcised, okay? The Philistine was uncircumcised. The Philistine had another God that he believed in, and David was in right standing with the Lord. David David was in covenant with God. David was a consecrated child of God. He was anointed. He was surrendered. He was prepared. That's what consecrated. He was sanctified, okay? He was in right standing with the Lord. He was in covenant with the Lord. Therefore, God moved on his behalf. Okay, and so that is what the Lord is saying in this hour. He is saying, are you in covenant with me? Are you in right standing with me? Are you circumcised your heart? Okay, your heart is your heart with me, says the Lord. A lot of people, you going to church and you and you worshiping you, you know, I believe in God. And, but where is your heart at? Okay, you praying to God. But are you in covenant with God for God to move on your behalf? Okay, that is what the Lord is saying. All right. See, the thing is, when you are in covenant with God, when you are fully surrendered with God, when you know that you are in standing with God, when you know that you are in relationship with him, you your heart is truly with God. You can move so different with, with that. You can truly. That was confidence that David carried. He was comp there was assurance that David had because he knew that he was in right standing with the God with God. Therefore, he went to the Philistine and he says, No, uh-uh. God's about to hand you over to me. And I know this for a fact. I have confidence in this. You know? All David had to do was show up in confidence and use his stones. 
his confidence was in the Lord. It wasn't in no sword. It wasn't in stones. It was in the true and living God because his life and his, he was, his life was with him. He was fully surrendered with God. See, here's the thing. When you know, my God, y'all, when you know what the Lord, when the, what the Lord has shown you about covenant and you know that you are in this right standing with God, you can move so different. You can move different, right? You can move different. There are many people that, that say, but they don't know if they are truly saved. They don't know if they're truly saved. They don't know if God is really going to move on their behalf. You know, they don't have really the faith that they think and say that they do. But there was something different about this story. And God said it was because of covenant. You had a, you had a child of God who was in covenant with, with, the, with the Lord. Okay. And then you had this Philistine who showed up. You know, in confidence, but he was not with the true and living God. Therefore, God says, I'm going to hand him over to you because my promises are going to come to pass. My covenant with you has been established. I am not a man. God is not a man that he shall lie. Right. And so what God was showing me, what Holy Spirit was revealing and showing me this is that Tia, he was like, there are many times that things could have defeated you. But I didn't allow it because you were in covenant with me. You were in right standing with me. There were attacks that God was showing me that was on my life. My Lord, y'all, there were attacks. There have been people, there have been things and people trying to say things and trying to send attacks. But God has said, because you are in covenant with me, you cannot be touched. Mm, you cannot be touched. But do you know that as a child of God? Are you in right standing with the Lord or are you in another covenant? That's just like many people, they're married, right? But because they are in these, uh, these organizations, these secret societies, their covenant is there. Your covenant is with that organization. Yes, you're married, right? But you're married also to another thing. You're married to a different God, okay? And the thing is, what people don't understand is people, you know, because this is a spiritual, you have to catch it by revelation and Holy Spirit, right? This is not no surface level thing. And so when we are in a covenant with something different, when we are under a false God and we, when we have these idols, what God is saying is that you are cheating on him like marriage, like marriage, you are cheating on the Lord with these idols that's in these churches, that's in these ministries, that these organizations that you are a part of. And anything, we know that anything can become an idol. Anything can become a God in your life. Anything that you show, show more reverence to, that you honor, right? More than the Lord is an idol, okay? Anything that you cannot give up for the Lord is an idol. Anytime you get mad because people speak truth and call things out of what it is that you are doing that's not of him, that's an idol in your life. You get def you get defensive, you get angry. You defend that very thing more than you do Christ. You defend that more than you do God. Okay? And so the Lord is saying that it is consecration and covenant that I am honoring, that I'm looking at in this hour. On top of many things, because there's God is there's so, so many moving parts. God truly want people to be saved and to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. He really want people to come in salvation with Him, y'all, in this hour because Jesus is coming back. Okay, and that's why you know I can prophesy, I can get prophetic words all day. You know, as a mouthpiece of the Lord, but God is saying. Can you share the gospel of Jesus Christ? Can you get somebody saved right on spot that's an unbeliever? Can you share your testimony with people or, or are you afraid? Okay. God is saying that to defeat the things that's going to come ahead, are you in covenant with the Lord? Are you in covenant with the Lord? Are you a consecrated people? Are you a called out people? That's why the Bible tells us to not become conformed to this world, the patterns of it, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Y'all, God is coming for idols. God is coming for these false things that we have made in the church, in our lives. Y'all, God is coming for, for it. He's about to tear it down. Okay. He's coming after the church. He's coming after these leaders that have been leading their sheep astray. 
okay? There be a changing of the garment, all right? God is saying, I am raising up new uh, teachers and preachers and pastors and prophets and event. I'm raising up new men and women in this hour. Those who hearts are truly with me, says the Lord. All right. And so it wasn't a stone. It wasn't a sword. David was in covenant with the Lord. And that's why he was able to defeat the Philistine. All right. The children of Israel in the book of Joshua chapter seven, they were defeated because they broke covenant with the Lord. They did not set themselves apart. God is saying, are you distracted in this hour or are you listening to me? Do you know my voice? My voice says the Lord. The scripture says in, in the New Testament, I want to say it's in um, Matthew, I believe. But it talks about how the sheep, they knew the voice of Jesus. They knew his voice. They didn't listen to strangers. They knew their shepherd. Does God know you? Do you know God? Do you know his voice? Or are you listening to what your pastor is saying? Or are you taking, you know, what your pastor is saying back to the foundation? That's the word of God. Okay. Um, and so, whew, that's all I wanted to share. I didn't want to go into a deep study, a deep teaching on this. But if you do want more, go look on YouTube on my live. Um, our recent Bible study is called Consecration. And you can get there and you can, you can go there and get all the scriptures. That was part one because we only did uh, part one for all the scriptures that's in the, that's in the Old Testament. We covered the Old Testament on, on Consecration. Um, but God wants me to, want me to do a part two about consecration so that we can see how consecration now looks of course in the new testament because it definitely it looks different right um but it still is important okay um and so anyway i'm just gonna pray us out and i just uh hope that this word has been edifying to the body but also to you as an individual as a believer of jesus christ all right so heavenly father i have so heavenly father um i come before you god i thank you for this word today God, I thank you, Lord, for choosing me to speak to me, God. I don't take it lightly at all. God, I thank you, Father, um, for this word. And I pray that this word has gone forth. And Lord, that it fall, God, on fertile ground. That it fall on good soil, God, for those who are going to be listening and watching uh, this video. Father, I pray that they will take this word, God, back to you, Father, in Jesus' name. That they don't just uh, take what I say, Father, but they take everything that I say back to you, God. God, I thank you, Lord. I pray that as we get ready to move into a new year, Father God, that you will establish your covenant with us, oh God. Father, I pray that as we go into a new year, God, Lord, that we will become a consecrated people, that we that we will become a sanctified people, oh God, that is truly set apart, Father God, from the world. Lord, that when you look at us, that you know our heart, that when you look at us, God, Lord, that you know that we are truly with you. Father, I bind every attack of the enemy, oh God, over my life, over uh, those who are going to be watching and listening today. God, I bind the attacks of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that if there is anything that is not of you, oh God, any doors that we have opened, any uh, any oaths or rituals and covenants, God, that we have entered into, God, that is not of you. Father, I pray that you will give us revelation, oh God, Lord, that we will repent and that we, God, will come come out of these uh these oaths and these covenants oh god that is not of you father father i pray lord that we will be truly a people that believe in jesus christ that is in relationship with him that is in right standing with him oh god lord so that we can truly go out as disciples of jesus christ and do what we what you have called for us to do oh god father i pray right now lord that if the enemy have legal grounds to anyone that is watching this video by way of things that they have committed themselves to, Father, I pray that you will reveal it to them, Lord, so they can come out of it, uh, God, so that they can close the doors, God, up to these things that is just not of you. Father, we know that your son, Jesus Christ, he is true, he is living, he is real, and he is coming again, God. And so, Father, I pray if there is anybody that's watching this, Lord, that is an unbeliever, that has been lost that has strayed away from god um that that you know don't know if they're if they are saved father today i pray lord that they will receive your son jesus christ as their lord and savior that they will confess that he is jesus that he died on the cross for our sins that he rose again god 
just for us, just for our sins, God, so that we could be healed and saved from our sins, that we are forgiven of our sins, oh God. Father, I pray, Lord, that we that we will receive him, Father, that we will repent of our sins, God. Your, Lord, your word says that we have fallen short of the glory of God. And so, God, we are not perfect, Father God. We're not perfect by no means, God. But you have called us to be holy. You have called for us to be set apart, oh God, from the world. And so, Father, I pray today there was at least one person that is saved um, through this video today, God, that they will receive your son Jesus as their Lord and Savior, God. And that they will begin to walk a new path, Lord, with you. And so, God, I thank you. I thank you, God, for this year of 2023. God, I thank you, Lord, for every blessing, every uh, challenge, God, every correction, God, everything that you have done for us in our lives. I thank you, Father, for it. And I pray, Lord, as we go into a new year, 2024, God, that you are uh, just... Uh, continuing to bless us, God, that you are continuing to reveal yourself to us, O oh Lord. Lord, that we are coming, Father God, to have even a deeper uh, relationship with you, God, deeper love for you, God, genuine relationship with you, Father. And so, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. It's in your son Jesus' name I pray. Amen and a man amen all right y'all so that is all that i have i pray that this word has blessed you guys i love you and i will see you in the next video mm -hmm.